Hi, it's Steph. What new hot development framework should you learn? That's a question that comes up every so often, and it was a question I used to wrestle with when I was really active in coding, uh, especially back in the 90s, because it seems, from my experience, and it still happens today, it seems like almost every other day somebody invents a new framework. It could be a new JavaScript framework, it could be a new PHP framework, uh, it could be whatever. There's tons and tons of frameworks out there. So which one should you learn? Well. It's always changing, and I'm recording this in 2016, but here's a general principle. Don't waste your time with every single framework that comes out because there's gonna be so many. When you do decide to look at a framework, make sure it does something significantly better or significantly different from, from what's out there now. So for instance, there's uh, bootstrap and there's other uh, layout frameworks out there. I forget them all of a sudden, but you got to ask yourself the, the, the framework that comes after bootstrap, you know, there's a bunch, um, do they really bring much to the table that bootstrap doesn't already bring? Now, of course, the people who push a particular framework, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, our framework does this better. But, and that could be the case. But what you're going to find with most frameworks is that you take framework A and framework B. And framework A may do X, Y, and Z really good. And framework B will do uh, A, B, and C real good. But, you know, they don't do all things really good. So what you'll find is that when you're moving from one framework to the next, you might be giving up advantages from your first framework when you move to the next framework. It's not always the case, but most of the time it is. So my advice to you is keep an eye out on the new frameworks maybe devote 5% of your time in coding to looking at new frameworks, but really pay attention to the buzz, see what's going out there and see where the demand is and see where the demand is growing because I assume you're doing this to make a living, you're not just an academic uh, nerd and you don't wanna waste your time on some cutting edge framework that just disappears. And I tell you, most of them do. And this is from my experience from the last 20 years as a developer. In back in the 90s, it was no difference, especially in the Java community. That was my main language back in the 90s. There was tons of frameworks coming out in Java like you wouldn't believe. And they're just about all dead now, all of them. So take your time. You can get caught up uh, trying to learn all these frameworks and there's really not too much of an advantage. So all that being said, in 2016, if you're a web developer, of course, study and know your HTML5 and CSS3 well because these are the foundation languages that are not going anywhere. And of course, JavaScript. Um, I would, in terms of uh, layout frameworks, I would look at Bootstrap. I would look at jQuery as well. That's a JavaScript framework. And in terms of server-side frameworks in the PHP world, I would be doing Laravel and on the JavaScript and I would look at, uh, if you wanted to learn JavaScript server-side programming, I would look at Node.js and perhaps Express.js, which sits on top of Node. If all this is a nerd to you and you don't understand it, don't worry about it. The first thing is you gotta learn HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. And if you don't know uh, a server-side programming language, then my number one choice would probably be PHP because it's so widely used. Although, let me put it out there, even though PHP is extremely powerful and PHP, Ruby, Python, they're all neck and neck in terms of their capabilities. They each have their pros and cons. It's funny, PHP is like the dirty redheaded stepchild of programming these days. It's, uh, it's poo-pooed upon by uh, new nerds because they look at PHP's dirty past. And the fact of the matter is you're going to be very productive and very capable. And PHP has all the bells and whistles that you're going to see roof Ruby and Ruby on, whale, on Rails, especially when you got uh, projects in PHP like Laravel. That said, from what I'm seeing, uh, JavaScript looks like it's going to be uh, the big uh, mover in terms of server-side programming and with uh, Node.js underlying underlying rather uh, frameworks like Express.js and uh, people really like it because JavaScript is used in the web browser and there's no com competing technologies. If you're doing scripting, 
programming in the web browser, you're using JavaScript, that's for sure. And it appeals to, to uh, people to be able to use JavaScript on the server as well, so you don't have to learn two languages because if you do PHP or Ruby on Rails programming or, uh, or Django programming with, with, Pyth with uh, Python, you have to learn two programming languages because you always have to learn JavaScript, no question. So then on, so if you do server-side programming with you know, these other languages, PHP and Python and so forth, that's another language you have to learn. So, you know, that's why you see the move in, in, the, in favor of JavaScript and it's growing. And JavaScript, I think, is already the most popular programming language in the world. So um, that's it.